wide awake and you're ready to hear from God and out of your food comas and uh, how many of you ate a lot? How many of you need to repent today for gluttony? I think some of us probably are there today. You, know, you come to church because you're feeling guilty and so we can do that at the end of the service, come up to the altars. But uh, you know, last week we talked about in the first uh, week of the sermon series about how praise is birthed from a grateful heart. And so one of the, the most important things about being grateful is that our praise is attached to how grateful we are. You can't just come into church, and for a lot of us, we look at praise, and we think about songs that we sing in the, the car or at the house or when we come to church and uh, the first couple songs, and we're praising God. And that's what we think of praise, but really praise, if you look at what it truly is, it's a heart condition of gratefulness that's expressed through praise. You know, if you're just praising God with the, the words that you're singing, it's really worthless to God if you're not truly grateful for the things that he's done for you. Because some of the times you can come to church and you just love the music, and it's like karaoke here, that you're really not meaning anything, and you just love being able to sing because it's the only time other than the shower you're able to sing. And so some people, they, they look like they're into worship, but they're just really into just letting it all out. And so oh, to God, that's really worthless, and God's looking for people that have a grateful heart that are really praising him, because praise is a weapon. If you look at the Bible, you see when people start to praise God, change starts to happen. You start to see a change in their life. You start to see where chains are literally broken off of them. In jail, we saw Paul and Silas, they started to praise God in the midnight hour, and all of a sudden, they were free from prison. We see that the Israelites went into battle, and they sent the praisers first, and they didn't even have to fight the battle, but God fought the battle for them. Oh, because praise is a weapon that we need in churches. And for a lot of us, we've lost it. For a lot of Christians, for a lot of churches, they've lost the understanding of what true praise is. How, can, how come can I go into some churches that are big churches, they have great musicians, they have great singers, the best of the best, I can walk into those services and it feels dead spiritually. And then I can go in to another church where the, the singers aren't as good, the, the band's not as good, people sound awful that you can hear in the, the sanctuary, but yet the presence of God is so strong. Oh, what, what's the one church missing and the other church have? Well, I believe one church understands that they're coming from a, a grateful heart, that they truly understand, you know, and understand and are grateful for the blessings that God has done for them. And it's just not some performance. And so I believe that you weren't born grateful or ungrateful, that it's a life decision that you have. It's a choice. What do you focus on? Are you focusing on the things that you have, or are you focusing more on the things that you don't have? And so we've got to train ourselves. The Bible says in, uh, in Romans 12, 2, let God change you by changing the way you think. And so I believe that a lot of us think we have all these issues going on in life, and if God would just change this issue... In my life, everything would be all right. But God's just saying, if you just change your thinking, everything will just shift in your life. And so we got to be more aware that God is trying to change our thinking when we're trying to change our situation. And so we're going to just jump right into scriptures this morning. Deuteronomy 8, 7. And we're going to keep on going from there. And it says, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. Say, good land of flowing streams and pools of water, with fountains and springs that gush out in the valleys and hills. It is a land of wheat and barley and, and grapevines and fig trees and pomegranates, of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is abundant in the hills. When you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. But, be, but that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commandments, regulations, and decrees that I am giving you today. And so the Bible is talking to the Israelites here, and we can relate to them also, where God is wanting to, to give us a good land. 
No, God has blessings for you. He wants you to live in prosperity. No, he, he wants you to be blessed. He doesn't want you to be just barely getting by every single day. But this is the problem when you're so blessed. And, and you're not worried about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink and what you're going to wear. No, for a lot of us, we just worry about the options. It's not really about if we're going to have these things like a lot of other people do in the world. But, you know, the problem happens is when you begin to get to so, when you're so blessed, you forget where your provision comes from. You begin to think that your provision comes from your bank account, from your boss, from all these other sources. And the thing, though, is, is whoever you think is your provider controls your life. You know, if you think that your boss is your provider and not God, you're probably not going to come to church all the time because you're going to be more worried about stuff going on at work. You're going to be thinking, oh, I, I might not like this job and I feel like it's maybe not the right thing, but I've got to stay here because I'm stuck. Instead of God saying, you know what, I have something better for you, if you realize that I'm your provider, you know, I'll take you into a land that's good. And so we, we, this, is a, this is a great place to be, but it's one of the most dangerous places to be. But yet, when you look at this, this is where God wants us to be. But he wants us to be able to do this in a way that we remember him at all times. Oh, for a lot of us, we don't even realize that we're blessed, but we talked about last week just how blessed we are. And it was just really a great message in some of the statistics that I said that were just mind-boggling last week. If you didn't see it, then you can just watch it online and but one of the things we talked about is the 1%. Oh, you hear a lot of talk about the 1%, the elite in the world, and we, we talk about it as being the 1% of the United States. And for you to be in that grouping, you have to make $450,000 a year for the top 1%. That's, that's quite a bit of money. I don't think that many people probably make that much. Maybe a few of you do here a year. But to be in the 1% of the world, to be in the, the elite status in the world, all you got to make is $32,400. $32,400, you're in the elite class of the world, the one percenters. Uh, and I would think that a lot of us are probably in that area today. And we don't realize just how blessed we are. I want you to tell your neighbor, turn to them and say, I am abundantly blessed. Now, you're, you're not just blessed, you're abundantly blessed. Oh, but what's crazy about that is as you are telling that person to your, your left or to your right, whatever person you chose that has maybe better breath today, <laughs> but whoever you chose, when you said that to them, for some of you, you said it, but you didn't believe it. For some of you, you're, you're saying it, but you're just doing it because everyone else was doing it. For some of you, you're the more spiritual group. You, know, you said it, and you didn't believe that you have it right now, but you're believing one day I'm going to be abundantly blessed. You know, for a lot of you, maybe you're in that group, but for a few amount of people that are here today, you really believe, no, I'm abundantly blessed right now. I, I, I'm really believing that, that it's just not something to come, but I'm in it right now. That I'm living in this good land right now that God has called me to live in. And for the problem with a lot of us is we just don't realize how blessed we are. We don't realize that we're in the good land. We don't realize that we are blessed. You are living in the most prosperous nation in the world. Out of all the one percenters that live in the world, half of them come from the United States. That's just a crazy statistic if you think about that, just how blessed we are. There's other great nations that have money, but we make up a half of the one percenters and the whole world. And we can go through life and we can keep on thinking that we're not blessed and we just need a little bit more. But other people in the world would be looking at us and they're saying, no, you just don't realize what you got. You know, you're working so hard, but you know, you have a hundred different pairs of clothes you can wear and your hardest decisions every single day is what am I going to wear? What food am I going to wear? Or what food am I going to eat? And you know, what car am I going to drive if you have multiple cars? And other people in the world are just thinking, if I just had a piece of food today, I'd be happy. No, I, I don't have an option of what I'm wearing today because this is all I got. Or I only have one other outfit and I've got to keep on rotating them. 
we don't even realize that we're, a lot of us, we're just living in the land of blessing. And I believe that the devil wants to be able to, to put a veil over our eyes, to get us into the place where we don't realize we're blessed because he can stop us from being grateful. He can stop us from really having this weapon of praise in our life. Because I think it's a pretty big hindrance to your gratefulness if you don't realize that you're blessed. If you're always thinking about what you don't have, you know, that, that's, that's messing you up. It's hard to be grateful when that's all you're thinking about. And I, I believe also, the more blessed you are, or the more, real, the, the more you realize that you're blessed, the greater potential you have to be grateful. When you begin to start to change your mindset, you begin to focus on the things that you do have, you begin to get a bigger perspective of the world. But for a lot of us, all we do is see what's around us. All we're looking at is people on TV that have millions of dollars, and we're always looking at them and thinking, man, I just don't have that much money. Well, you might be making $100,000 a year, but you're just always thinking, no, I just don't have that much money. And everyone else around you is thinking, I want to be like you. Oh, the devil's blinded us so much. And because of that, we've gotten to this place that is very dangerous. And I believe also, because of this, a lot of us are just so worried about us being blessed, we're not being that blessing for other people. And as this morning, we're going to be looking at the first level of being grateful. We're going to keep on going with this sermon series. I was thinking it was only going to be a two-week sermon series, and I was talking to my mom about it, and I was just saying, oh, this is really good stuff. This is some stuff you might want to use if, you haven't, if you're not sure where you want to go next. And she's like, no, I really like this. I'm going to do this too. And so we're going to keep on going with different levels the next few weeks of, of being grateful because I think this is really important. If we would just get this, I believe it's going to change our life. It's going to change this church. We're going to be a more powerful church. We're going to have a greater presence of God in this church if we can just get this. And so the first level we're going to be talking about today, I'll say in a moment, but I believe a lot of us are, are stuck in this level. And, and one of the issues in life is, you know, that we just don't know where we stand, how we're doing. Wouldn't it be nice if life was like a video game? How many of you ever just grew up playing pinball, maybe Pac-Man, you'd go to the arcades, and you'd try to go to different stages and levels to try to beat, and then you'd know exactly what your score was? Oh, and it would be great, wouldn't it, if you just knew how you're doing. You know, if God just gave you a report card in the mail every once in a while, sent it to you, and you could just go down the list and say, okay, this is your love grade. Oh, you've been doing a little bit better. You got a, you got a B now instead of a C. Good job. You're improving on it. And you know, on your gratefulness, though, you really got to work on it. You got a D here. You know, and it would be just great if we could just look down the list and be like, okay, I didn't even think about that. Sorry, God. No, I was just so focused on these other things. And I believe that grateful, being grateful is like that, is it's one of those things that we just don't even think about other than once a year a lot of times. Yeah, we remember to say thank you to people, but just being grateful in our life uh, and all things of just what we're going through and, and just having this perspective that we're blessed, it's just something we don't think about for a lot of us. We're just so consumed on just the busyness of life and so today, as we look at being thankful, the first level is that we're thankful for the provision. And you might be thinking, well, that's, that's really simple, Pastor Jordan. You know, I grew up with my parents. I didn't need to come to church today if that's the point that you have today because my parents told me to be thankful for everything that you were given. And so I was growing up, whether you're a Christian home or, or not a Christian home, all you were probably told while you were growing up is to say thank you when someone gives you something. You know, it's pretty basic. I think most of us got that, and we look at this at, at the surface level of, you know, let's be thankful for the provision. And a lot of us think that we're doing really well. And, and last week I talked about, which I'm not going to talk about really this week, is sometimes we've got to go to the past to remember some of the things God has done for us. Because one of the things we do is we forget about what God has done. We just remember the here and now. We remember what he did last month for us. But what about those things that he did just years ago when you were unsaved and you were so messed up and you had no hope and you were addicted and all this stuff was going in your life and you found God and how much he's changed your life over the course. We're bad at remembering 
the long term, but the short term we're pretty good at. But here, I think this is one of the years that I, I want to focus on today that I think we really mess up on. And, and for a lot of us, it's really easy to be grateful to, for the things that you want. You now, if I were going to give you the car of your dreams, the color, the make, the year, everything about it was exactly what you wanted, you'd be really thankful. But what happens if I gave you something that you really didn't want, but you needed? What, have you ever got a gift at, at Christmas time where, you know, you, you know you need some clothes, but, you know, you get this clothes item and you're just like, thank you, but this is not really what I wanted. You know, this is not something that I would ever wear. How many of you are hungry today? Just raise your hand. It's fine if you're hungry. You're not sinning if you're hungry. And we're not going to have an altar call for you. But just keep your hands up. I, I want you to keep your hands up if you're hungry. Here you go. Here's a banana. You guys can fight for this. Who else is hungry? Here you go. So the, the first thing that you guys start thinking, who else is hungry? There you go. Everyone's good at catching here. We'd make a good baseball team, I think, at Church on the Rise. But I was just doing that just as an example. As I was handing out some of these items, you know, what's, what's some of the things that's probably going through people's minds when you just get a bagel that just is plain? Oh, hey, you're hungry. You're telling me you feel like you're dying of hunger right now. I know you're not dying of hunger, but you're hungry right now. You know, you, you need to eat. So I'm giving you something that you need. But for a lot of us, if I gave you a, a bagel and you're, and you're even pretty hungry, you'd be saying, no, thank you, but no, I need it toasted. No, thank you, but no, I don't eat a bagel unless it has butter on it. I need some cream cheese. I, I need butter on it. I, I, I know, peanut butter. I, I need jam. Whatever you do with your bagel. But for some of you, you might even be hungry. But you won't even eat it now because it's just not the way that you like it. And so I think a lot of us have butt issues. We get to this place and we say, no, thank you, God, but, and then it just ruins it all. Here, have gone through something and you, and you did something and people say, no, you did such a great job, but, and then just, you're like, okay, that, that was all just a bunch of, a load of crap in the beginning. And you really just wanted to tell me something that I should do differently. You know, and so I think that God thinks the same thing a lot of times is with us is we're just saying, thank you, God, but you know what, I, that house is great, but, you know, I, I didn't get the one that I really wanted. I wanted a bigger house. Oh, thank you, God, but, you know, that car that I got, I just got one that's not really that great, and, you know, I'm just believing one day for the better car because I couldn't afford the one I really wanted right now. And because we're not really happy about it, and we have this big but before we're really truly being grateful. It just kills everything else. Now tell your neighbor, say, I got butt issues. And I'll tell your other neighbor, you got big butt issues. No, because we do. We have this issue that we just have this butt in front of. What well, we just say, God, thank you, but. And then it just messes up everything. And, and we, we have to get to this place that, no, God wants to give us good things. But the thing you have to realize with God is he's giving you the things that you need and maybe not the things that you want. Maybe the things that you want are not what's best for you. I kind of picture it like this as God's a good father and he's trying to, to feed you spiritual things. He has spiritual food for you. And he's saying, no, eat these, eat these peas. And you're saying, no, I, I don't want that, God. I, I don't want to go through hardship. That doesn't taste good. God, I want the dessert. I want the good stuff. God, I want to be blessed. It's just crazy to me when you have a, an altar call for who wants more money and wants to be blessed by God. You have 100% of the people saying, God, I want that. Praise God. All of a sudden, the church just goes nuts. You think that there's a revival happening when there's a preacher that says God's about to bless some people with some money. Well, then if you're in this place where God is wanting to be able to open some people's callings up in their life for them, you feel like you've been stuck, but God wants to put you in some situations that's going to be hard. 
You're going to have to go through a season that he's, you're going to have to go learning through some hard times before he gets you there. But God has something great for you. If you want that, raise your hand and you're not going to have hardly anybody. No, hard times? No. And then you just check out. No, that's not what I'm here for. I'm, easy, I'm here for the easy button. Spirit say, I, I just want the good stuff that God has for me. I just want to enjoy the land. And we can get in trouble for a lot of us. And we don't realize how blessed we are. And we ruin our gratefulness with our big butt problems. You know, if you look at the children of Israel, here they are. And they got, it's so good. They, they just got freed from Egypt. They were slaves for over 400 years. That's a long time. You know, for a lot of them, they just heard about being free one time that their, their families you know, lived in Cana. And they heard about Abraham and Isaac and, and Jacob. But by then, it was kind of like just stories that were passed down. And it wasn't really real to them because... They were only used to being slaves, and all of a sudden, God comes in and just frees them miraculously. And then God goes with them into the desert, and, and they're there with God. God's presence is there, and they can even see it manifested in front of them in a cloud, in a, a fire at night. And just to think how incredible that is, and when they wake up, there's manna all over the ground, and they just got to pick it up off the ground for their food for that day. As you're traveling through the wilderness, if there's not water, God just tells Moses, hit this rock, and it's just going to flow out, and it's going to make a stream. Impossible, naturally, but they know, hey, God is with us. Everything that we need, he's supplying, because the Bible says he supplies all of our, his need, all of our needs according to his riches and glory. It doesn't say that he supplies all of our wants, but you look at Israel. Here they are. They're the most blessed people maybe in the history of man. You don't see another generation that sees God moving in such a, a way other than the generation that was with Jesus here on earth. And yet they just had all these butt problems. They kept on saying, God, you know, thank you for the manna. Just think about it. The manna's coming down from heaven. It's just all over the, the ground when they wake up. And they're saying, thank you, God, for that. But you know what? I'm getting sick of it. Oh, well, thank you, God, for all your provision. But, you know, I'm, I'm just sick of in my shoes. There's sand. I want to get out of there. You know, they're, they're looking at all the things that they want instead of just experiencing the blessings that God is with them. He's providing for them. He's giving them all the things that they need, and, and they messed it all up. And for a lot of them, they couldn't go into the good land that God had for them because their focus is just all jacked up. And for some of you, you're here today, and you're just going through this wilderness in life. You're going in this place where you just don't understand what's happening. It just doesn't ever seem like you're getting to the areas that God has called you to live in. You just know that God has something great for your life. But for some of you, you got some butt problems that is just keeping you out of the good land that God has for you. Because you just can't be thankful for the things that God has given you, for the things that you need. You have to focus more on the things that you want. God's not this magic genie. And a lot of us, us Christians, I, I think, have issues with our prayers being answered is because we keep on just seeking God on the things that we want. And it's, this Christian life is not about us praying to God what we want. It's about us hearing from God on what he wants. And some of us think that we're going to be satisfied in life. And if we can just get these things that we want will be happy and God's just saying if you'll just listen to what I want then you'll truly be happy my ways doesn't make sense but if you'll just trust me maybe happiness is not all about accumulation but more about appreciation maybe it's more about appreciating the things that God is doing in our life to really bring a true happiness. Because I've seen people that have a lot of money and they're miserable. And I've seen people that are going through just crazy things in their life like cancer and they just seem like some of the happiest people. They're just really satisfied in life of, of what God has done for them. You know, it doesn't mean that they're happy with what they're going through, but they're very just grateful and content. I was just talking to a lady at our church this week and she was just telling me that when she went through cancer, she would go around just telling the doctors, no, I'm in a win-win situation here. If I die, I win. If I get healed, I win. Because if I die, I win. I go to heaven. 
If God heals me here, I, I win because then I can be a testimony for God and His goodness here on this earth. It's just a matter of how do you look at life. Because if you're a Christian here, you're abundantly blessed. And a lot of us, we're looking at these things of God that God has already said that are, that's ours right now, and we're looking at it as, you know, one day maybe it's going to fall on my lap, and God's just saying, you just got to change the way you're thinking to be able to grab a hold of the things that I have for you. They're already yours. You know, it's in your bank account. It might not be in your hand right now, but you got to go in, and you got to go get it from the bank with your faith. Maybe there's some roadblocks into your life that are messing you up that you got to figure out, but... It's yours. You're abundantly blessed. And how many of you are, are just really appreciative of your utility companies? You know, I, I know some of you might have had some issues with them before. But all of a sudden, I bet if you didn't have it, if you didn't have electricity, if you didn't have gas, all of a sudden you'd be like, you know what, I'd gladly pay them triple. I, I would gladly give my paycheck to be able to have these things. You know, and it was... It's just incredible when I was talking about last week some of the statistics of the world that a quarter of the people in this world don't even have electricity. Well, they, they live without it. And I don't even know what it would be like to live without it because I've never lived without it for more than just a, a day or two, camping or something. Or at our house, electricity is off and, and it's not easy because then what would you do? Because you can't freeze things, the refrigerator... You know, it, it's, it's all right for a few days, but what happens if it's a week or two? Oh, what do we do? We're eating out of cans every day. Oh, the, those deer that you used to see in the backyard all of a sudden look yummy instead of cute. You know, you're having some issues because without electricity, a lot of us couldn't survive. There'd be madness. And so, you know, we can say that we're appreciative of you know, our electric company and, and all that they do, but how many know that if you don't really show them appreciation in the giving of your money, there's issues? You know, it's more than just talk. You can't just say, write them a thank you letter and just say, I'm just so thankful that you give me electricity. You know, you're just awesome. We love you so much. And you send that in the mail and that's enough. But you got, you got to pay them. And if you don't pay them, there's another notice that comes in, in, in the mail, another letter they're going to send you that says, notice of late payment. And if you don't pay this in so much time, it might even say it's going off. And I believe that's what God's doing for us right now over these next few weeks is that some of us have some late payments and our gratefulness to God. Some of us are in this place where, you know, we've been so late in our payments of gratefulness that we've lost the sum of the power that God has in our life. Some of us are living powerless lives for God. And it's because we're not grateful for the things that God has done for us. Now, if I was going to go around and we were going to take a poll and, and we we're going to see how, what percentage of the church is grateful for their church, grateful for their family, I think almost 100% of you would say that I'm a grateful person. Uh, you would think, I'm doing well with that. I'm so thankful. But then we look a little bit deeper into your life. And you say, uh-oh. Because this is where it starts to hurt a little bit. You no, know, you might say that, hey, I'm so grateful for my pastor. I'm so grateful for my church. It's just so awesome. And then we start to look at your attendance. And we start to look at the reasonings why you're maybe missing church. And we get to see, oh, no, you're only here once a month. You know, you're only here every other week. You know, you're not on the dream team. You're never serving. You're not giving anything. You're, you're not a, doing the, gro the growth track. You know, you're, you're not part of, you've never done a small group before. And you're saying, oh, this thing, I'm just so appreciative of my church. Oh, it'd be harder to believe. Or you're saying, oh, God, I'm just so appreciative of you. You're just so good to my life. Thank you so much. I just love you, God. And all you do is pray for your food every week. And that's your prayer life. You're never spending time with God in the Word. Oh, how many of you had a, a friend like that? Just said, no, I'm just so appreciative of you. You're the best person ever. And every time you ask them to hang out, they're always like, no, I can't do it. You know, you're in some crazy situations where you have some emergencies and they're just not there for you. Be like, okay, I don't know if I believe you now. 
It sounded good, but it's not looking good. So I don't know if I believe you because I think actions speak louder than words. What about, you know, a lot of us say that, no, I'm so appreciative of my spouse. But if we had a hidden camera in your house and we saw the way that you treated your spouse and the way that you talked to them, for a lot of you, we couldn't play that hidden camera here at the church because we have to be beeping it out all the time. Or how you, how you deal with your kids. You might say you're appreciative, of them, but, but how do you treat them? How do you love them? Do you give them what they, they, they need? Or are you just trying to give them what they want so you can just shut them up and you can do whatever you want to go do? You know, what about your, your car or your house? You say that, I'm so grateful to God for these things, but if we would go into it and we saw that it was just a wreck, you know, if you gave someone that house, if you gave someone that car, and they're saying thank you for it, and then you saw it just a wreck, would you really think that they were grateful for it? Can you really truly be grateful for something without being faithful? Can you? Because I, th I think true gratefulness produces faithfulness. True gratefulness produces faithfulness. And that's an ouch for a lot of us. Because are we being faithful with the things that God has given us? I believe that's one of the, the true masteries. You're mastering this level one when you can start to get rid of your big butt and you can start to be faithful in all those areas that God has given you. I believe the devil is working so hard to be trying to make this, this idea of being grateful so childish, so elementary, that when you come into church, you automatically hear that this is the sermon series and you're just thinking, this is, oh, this is for baby Christians. This is for somebody else. I'm good at this. And then all of a sudden you just start to check out and you're thinking about the football game. And if you're thinking about the football game today with the Browns, you have problems because they're going to lose again at their playing today. It's just, right, you'd be just a millionaire if you just bet against them all the time. Like, it's just, it, they're not good. If that's what you're excited about, you need a new hobby. You know, I, I just don't understand how... Many years is it going to take for some people just to say, you know, that they need to get better or I'm just not going to waste my time. No, I, I just hate being heartbroken every single Sunday. Sunday should be a fun day, not a depressing day. No. <laughs> we need to do church after the Browns games and we probably get more people to come because they're just feeling so down. But, uh, and, and I love the Browns. I want them to win, but I just don't watch them until they start winning. I'm sorry. It's just been too long. But I believe that the devil is just fighting us so hard all the time, just trying to get us to focus on all these other things. He's saying, and we've got to get down to the root issues. You know, I, I just hate how so many things in life, people don't go to the root issues. A lot of times with doctors, they don't go to the root issues. You go and they just say, here's this drug and here's that drug, and you take those things and it gives you another problem, so you need another drug, and it didn't fix anything. It just get, stopped your headache, and now all of a sudden I feel like I'm going to throw up, and so I need something for the nausea. It's, just, it's an endless cycle. And I think a lot of Christians can start to try to do that too, and I'm telling you, gratefulness is a root issue of some of our lives. It's a root issue for some of you of not having the power of God in your life. For some of you, it's the root issue of not having the presence of God in your life. We talked about last week that the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. It's actually the doorway to God. The doorway to his presence that you have to walk through is being grateful, is being thankful. Without it, you can't enter into the things of God. You can't come into God's presence being ungrateful. You can't have pr true praise and be ungrateful. You can't have blessings on your life without being grateful because the Bible says if you're faithful with the little, you're given more. And so I believe this, this grateful thing that seems so easy to us in the past, we really got to look at this a little bit more because I think we're failing in it a lot. This message that I'm preaching, I'm preaching to myself just as much as I'm preaching to you today because I got some big butt issues just like you. I got some faithfulness issues that, that I got to deal with with some of the things I have in my life that I, I'm not taking care of like I should. And sometimes we can just be in this place that we're just wondering, where are the blessings? Where's this life that God has called me to live? And I think there's just this big roadblock in our life, and God's just saying, if you just change the way you think, 
if you just change the way you think about this gratefulness, if you really get into this and you really dig in and you try to grow in the levels that I have for you and the, the depth, I have some great things for you. And I just believe God has such great things for this church. I just really feel like God has set revival in this church that this is going to be, there's going to be an explosion that's going to happen soon with just people getting saved just all over in our community and coming to this church. But for some of us, we're just praying for it to happen. And God's saying to others, if you just build the church that I'm calling you to have, they'll come. If you'll just start to transform your mind, things will start to shift. God's just saying, you're waiting for me and I'm waiting for you. And I just feel like today that this is one of the things that God is waiting for us as a church to get in, to just shift into place so that he can just start to break out a little bit more for this to happen. Well, it's hard to, to really get grateful, though. Another thing that I think is just really hard of being grateful is when things come free to you. How many of you like free things? Free things is awesome. It's amazing that you can even go to places that that are, that are restaurants and that you hear the word free and people are coming for the dumbest things. Sometimes it's like, really, that, that doesn't even taste good, but, but because you see the word free, you're going there and it's, the line is huge. You know, people do crazy things for free things. And, but at the end of the day, when something's free, you don't treat it the way that you would if you paid for it. Think about when you were a kid. Think about how you just, just smash when it came to dinner time. And it came to having snacks when your parents were paying for the food. And then think about the difference when you went to college when you had to pay for it. All of a sudden, you ate a lot differently. You started eating a lot less. You started buying cheaper food. Think about your clothes. You know, when, when, when your parents bought it, if you jumped in a puddle, oh well. If you ripped your jeans a little bit, no, my parents will buy me new jeans, Right? Like you're going and you're playing baseball and you're sliding in the grass and you have all these grass stains. It's just kids don't even care about it. They don't even think about it because it's free. People that get their cars for free from their parents. A lot of times you see them where their cars can sometimes be trashed on the inside. They don't change the oil and, and they might have problems after a while with that. And, and so... When we get things for free, it's hard for us to get grateful. And the, the thing with God is he's so good and he's given us so many things for free, but it's really hard to understand the price that he paid. It's really hard to understand just how good he really is sometimes because it, I don't really get it. I don't think you really get it. If you can say that you really understand the significance of being a child of God, I'd call you a liar today. Because I don't think there's one human on earth that really truly understands it. I think there's some of us that get it more than others. But to be able to understand how big of a deal, how great that is, it's really hard to understand when we're perspective is just where we're at right now. And wouldn't it just be a lot easier? You know, this isn't something that we'd want to do, but wouldn't it just change our life in a moment if all of a sudden we had to go through what Jesus had to go through just a little bit and we got whipped three times of those 39 lashes? And what would we think about healing all of a sudden? Now, how much more would you want people to be healed? How much more would you go out and you'd pray for the sick? Because you'd be thinking, no, you don't understand. I paid a price for this. It's not something that I just kind of like want you to have or I only want some people to have I want people to desperately have this because I paid a, a big price for this or, or, or if you took one hole in your hand out of the, the holes that Jesus had to go through his feet and his hands if you just took one of those nails how much more would you be serious about living a holy life instead of just going off throughout the week living like the world and coming to church and asking God for forgiveness like a lot of people do how much more would you take your walk with God seriously? Or what about this even, even more so? What happens if you spend an hour in hell? If you spent just an hour in hell, how much would that change your life? How much more would you be a witness for God? How much more would you live pure? How much more would you be thankful for what God has done for us? No, it's, it's really hard to understand to the depths of it, but church, we gotta, we got to try to understand the best we can. we got to stop just thinking about the things that we want, be so self-consumed, and we got to begin to try to 
be grateful as best as we can here on earth and ask God, God, just help me understand. I, I want to know more. God, uh, you know, I'm living this life, uh, and I can sometimes be in this place where I'm just taking for granted all the things that you, you've given me. And God, I don't want to do that anymore. Help me to see. Give me a bigger perspective. For a lot of us, we're not praying these prayers to God and saying, God, open my eyes that I can really see. A lot of us think that we see so well, but you're just seeing what's around you. And that's just such a small perspective that some of us have. And so my prayer is that we just wake up, church, and that we become all that God has called us to be. And if you're here today and you're just saying, you know what, I want to be more grateful. No, I, I know I need this. I, I might have came in here today and I heard that we we're preaching on this and, and I thought it was going to be something that wasn't that good. But no, I, I was blown away that you know what, I have some issues. Uh, I'm not doing too well at level one. I thought I was a master at that. But I guess I'm not here today. And if you're just saying, no, God, I want to be more grateful. God, I want you to, to help me be more grateful. Just raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you right now. And my hand is up here today. Lord, I just pray for these wonderful brothers and sisters, Lord, that you would just bless them, Lord God, that you would begin to open their eyes, give us a new perspective, God, that we would truly see the way you want us to see. Lord, forgive us for, for being just co so consumed, so consumed on our own stuff, Lord, on our own wants, Lord, that we don't even just see all the things that you've done for us. Lord, help us to see in a deeper way the, the spiritual blessings, the natural blessings, Lord. Lord, help us to, to have a, a more powerful praise. Help us to be faithful. Help us to get rid of our big butts, Lord God, that we just can't get over. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. And Lord, I just ask that this church, that we would be able to go forward and that we'd be able to experience, Lord, your power, your presence, that when people would come here, Lord, that they, that they would just be transformed because revival would be happening in this place every single week, Lord. And we just give you ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen keep your eyes closed and this is the last thing I want to do before we end is if you're here today and you're not right with God the Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and you might be thinking here even today you're fine you're a good person but the Bible says that there is nobody good other than God and that if you just sinned one time you deserve death you deserve hell the Bible says but we have a good God and he said Oh, I'm willing to send my one and only perfect son to die for you so that you don't have to go to hell. All you have to do is just believe in him and make him Lord and Savior of your life. And the Bible says you are saved. And if you're here today and you know that you need God, you know you need to get right, or you're not sure and you want to be 100% sure on the count of three, I just want you just to slip up your hand. One, two, three three. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. You can just slip it down after you slip it up. Let's wait one more moment for whoever else. This is the most important decision you're ever going to make because this is the only eternal decision that you can make here on this earth. Praise God. If we could all just stand to our feet and I'm just going to have you stay at your seat, but if you raised your hand. I just want you to just pray this prayer with me. And for those of you that have already prayed this prayer, let's just pray it with them to encourage them. And I just want to encourage you too. This is not the finish line, but this is just the start. Now, when you get married on the wedding ceremony, it's not like, oh, this is all done now. No, this is just the beginning of your marriage. No, this is the beginning of your relationship with God. And so after the, the service, we have people that's going to be up here at the altar that would love to just be able to, to pray with you and talk to you if you would like to. And just understanding what it means to have a new relationship with God. And we have Bibles, free Bibles, at the VIP table out there with all the mugs we were talking about earlier. It looks just like this. And uh, if you need a Bible, we'd love to get you one for free. But let's pray together and just ask God into your, your life. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need you. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose again three days later for me. And I receive this free gift of salvation and I thank you for it. My life is yours from this moment forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give them a hand. We're just so excited with you. 
I want to say just love you all. Have a great week. We'll see you next week for part two of our, the second level. This is actually part three, but we're going to be talking about the second level of being grateful. But love you all and have a great week.